for this problem, we are told we have a compound that contains only carbon, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Um, and we're given the following information. Um, we give three statements, and with those three statements, we are trying to figure out the, mo the molecular formula of this compound. So the first thing we know is that the complete combustion of this, so when oxygen is added, produces carbon dioxide and water. And in the volume of, if we have the combustion of 35.0 milligrams of this compound, of CXHYNZ, we get um, 33.5 milligrams of CO2 and 41.1 milligrams of H2O. We're also told that um, a a, we're told that a 62 point, or sorry, 65, 5.2 milligrams sample was analyzed for nitrogen using the Dumas method, and it gives us 35.6 milliliters of dry N2 at a pressure of 740 torr and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And then our final statement is that the effusion rate of the gas is measured and found to be 24.6 milliliters per minute. And the effusion rate of argon, argon is um, under identical conditions is 26.4 four milliliters per minute. Okay, and so using these three bits of information, we're trying to figure out what our X, Y, and Z are here for the chemical formula. Um, so first thing we want to do is we want to calculate, go ahead and look at this first statement here, and we're going to calculate the molar mass of CO2, which is going to be 12.01 plus 2 times 16, which gives us a molar mass of 44.01 grams. And the molar mass of H2O is 2 times 1.008 plus um, 16, which gives us 18.016 grams per mole. Okay. Um, these we're obviously going to have to convert into grams. So we're going to be moving our decimal places three places to the left. So this will be 0 0.035 grams, 0 0.335 Zero, sorry, 0 0.0335 grams and 0 0.0411 grams. Okay. So we want to determine how many moles of carbon we are producing with our CO2 here. So we're going to take this and we have 0 0.03. 35 grams of CO2. We know that one mole of CO2 is 44.01 grams. And we also know that there is one mole, for every one mole of um, CO2, we get one mole of carbon. So we have 7.61 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of carbon, which equals 
when we multiply that by 12.01, which is the molar mass of carbon, we have 0 0.0091 grams of carbon. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing here with our water in order to figure out how much hydrogen we have. So we start off with 0 0.0411 grams, 0 0.0411 grams of H2O times 1 mole of H2O is 18.016 grams of H2O. And for every 1 mole of H2O, we have 2 moles of H. So when we solve, we have our grams H2O divide out, mole H2O divide out, we're left with moles of hydrogen. <clears throat> and we end up with uh, 4.56 times 10 to the negative third moles, which when again multiply that by the molar mass, which is 1.008, we get 0 0.0046 grams of hydrogen. So we have 0 0.091 grams of carbon and 0 0.0046 grams of hydrogen. To find our nitrogen, we're going to come back up here. We know that we had 0 0.035 grams of this compound, so 0 0.035, and we're going to go ahead and subtract the moles of carbon and the moles of hydrogen, so 0 0.00. 91 plus 0 0.0046 and we get that we have a total of 0 0.0213 grams of nitrogen. Now we have our grams and we can also use that to figure out our moles. So when we divide that by the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14, we get that we have 0 0.00152 moles of nitrogen. Okay, so that gives us a good bit of information. What can we do with that? We can now take that and start to find molar ratios or the molar fractions between them. So in this case, we can... For the carbon, let's start with carbon here first. And so with carbon, we had 7.61 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of carbon. And we're going to divide that by the moles of carbon. So 7.61 times 10 to the negative fourth. And we get a ratio of 1, obviously, because we divided it by the same number. Doing that with our nitrogen, we have 4.56 times 10 to the negative 3 mole of hydrogen divided by our 7.61 times 10 to the negative 4th. And we get, rounding it, approximately 6. And then finally, 0 0.00152 um, moles of nitrogen divided by our 7.61 times 10 to the negative fourth. And we get approximately 2. So if we substitute those values in, we can make a guess that our equation is going to be C. 1 H 6 N 2. If we have that as our formula, we can also now calculate our molar mass, which would be 12.01 plus 6 times 1.008 plus 2 times 14.007 
and we get a total molar mass of approximately 46.072 grams per mole. So with that molar mass, <clears throat> um, we can now use the effusion rates from over here. Okay, let's see if we can zoom in here. Okay, we can use our effusion rates um, in order to calculate what the approximate mass is with this data that we've been given. So in this case, we're going to take um, use the equation 24, use the effusion rate of argon, of, of our gas, divided by the effusion rate of argon, equals the square root of the molar mass of argon, which is 39.948, divided by the molar mass of our gas. And when we solve for x, we get that x is 46.45, which is awfully close to our molar mass of 46.072. So we can feel confident that our final molecular equation is CH6N2.